In the previous videos, we were introduced to normal distributions, particularly the standard normal distribution. And this video today is going to be dedicated to using the standard normal distribution as a tool to find probabilities associated with any normal distribution. Recall, review, that the standard normal is a normal distribution, of course. It has that classic bell shape, but it has very nice properties, namely the center or the mean is a zero. So I can draw this zero in the center and standard deviation one. Very nice properties. And another way that we can write that using this little squiggle notation, we sometimes call this the Z distribution. We'll finally see why today. And we could say that Z squiggle letter N. So Z is distributed normally with mean zero and standard deviation one. To be thorough here, I should label my axis on my little image. I should label it Z. Let's see why this Z distribution is so important. We've got this little theorem, and basically the, the punchline here is that we can transform our random variable into Z by using the following formula. I'll do it over here z equals your random variable, call it x, call it y, doesn't matter. You're going to subtract the mean from that value of your random variable and divide by standard deviation. So this is a formula that we're going to use a lot and we'll see even different versions of it in the near future. And we call this a Z value or a Z score. And what it represents is the number of standard deviations that a value is above or below the mean. And so a positive Z value will indicate that that observation is above the mean because you would see that this would end up being a subtraction that results in a positive value. And a value or an observation that's below the mean would be negative. And we know how to utilize the Z table to find probabilities in Z. So that part's no problem because we dedicated a whole video to that and have gotten a lot of practice with it. So the new step for us is going to be utilizing this formula appropriately. So that way we can find probabilities in the random variable that we care about by utilizing the Z distribution. So probabilities in your random variable can be determined by finding the corresponding probability in Z. Let's look at an example to illustrate this standardization theorem. The height of adult males in the United States is approximately normally distributed with a mean of 69 inches and standard deviation two and a half inches. We're going to use probability notation when reporting our solutions and part A states what proportion of the U.S. male population is under six feet tall. Okay, I'm going to need some space. Well, our information up here was provided in inches. And using that notation from earlier, I could write if y is going to be the height of adult males in the United States. I can then write that y squiggle is normally distributed with mean 69 comma standard deviation two and a half inches. Now this question was 
given in feet, but our information is in inches, so I'm going to need to convert this. I know that there's 12 inches per foot, so this is a question about 72 inches. Okay. Well, I like to draw a picture to illustrate what proportion or area or probability we are after. I'm going to draw a normal distribution in y, our random variable. I know that the mean is 69 inches right here. And this question is about the probability proportion area that uh, the proportion of the population under 72 inches. So if I was to shade a particular region, I would shade the region to the left of 72. Just looking at this image, I can see that more than half is shaded. So I know my answer better be more than 0.5. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is transform 72 inches into a z-score. Without the z distribution, this would be pretty hard to answer with the tools that we currently have. Unless we want to utilize calculus, this is, this is, this is pretty challenging, right? So we are trying to transform this into z. We know the z distribution very well. Center, zero. And we essentially are trying to determine what is the tick mark that corresponds with 72 inches that corresponds to z. So we're going to use that formula. z equals, take your value from the variable, subtract the mean, divide by standard deviation. 72 inches is the value of our variable. I'm going to subtract the mean of 69 inches. That's going to be a positive number because that's above the mean. 72 inches is above the mean. Utilize your handy dandy calculator to subtract, divide. The value that we get is a 1.2. Now notice I was a little lazy with my units here. But the units were 72 inches, 69 inches, over 2.5 inches. So z-scores are unitless. I do not put inches on the z-score because the units of inches would cancel. So what does this z-value represent? Basically, that is saying that a individual who is 72 inches tall is 1.2 standard deviations taller than the mean. 72 inches is 1.2 SDs above the mean height. And so that is what Z is representing which on our image over here, I can label that tick mark 1.2. Essentially, a 72 inches in this population is equivalent to 1.2 standard deviations above the mean. In Z, we know how to find this probability. I'm going to go to my z-table and look up this probability to the left of 1.2 standard deviations above the mean. I've got my standard normal z-table out. I'm going to cruise over to the positive side and I'm going to look up 
1.2 and the second decimal place would be zero. So our solution here, 0.8849. I will report that on our imagery over here. 0.8849. And that is the area that we found in Z. But because 72 inches is equivalent to 1.2 standard deviations above the mean, that is the same answer up here. So that is it. That is how we find our solutions. And I did say, please use correct notation. So I will demonstrate that now. Probability notation. So this is probability that our random variable, I called it y, is less than 72 inches is 0.8849. So that is, that's it. We will do more examples like this to demonstrate the utilization of this formula in different scenarios. We don't need to draw two pictures every time, but I am going to always draw one. So let's get cooking. Part B. What percentage of the U.S. male population is taller than 66 inches? Okay, so I'm going to draw my distributions in Y. I've got my mean. 66 will be below the mean, and I need to convert 66 into a z-score. I'm going to do this over here. z is the value, 66 inches, subtract the mean, 69 inches. Notice that is about to be a negative value because 66 is below the mean. This is negative 1.2. So notice also with part A, A had a z-score of positive 1.2. So 66 inches and 72 inches are equidistant from the mean. Just a fun fact here. And we are going to look up this z-score in the z-table. However, we want the probability that, or percentage, of the population that is taller than 66 inches. So to illustrate this, again, shading the appropriate region, this time to the right. My answer, again, should be more than a half. Let's look up our z-table. When we go to the z-table, we know that we need to do 1 minus, because we are looking up the probability in the right tail. So we want to do probability that y is greater than 66 inches we will need to do 1 minus whatever we look up from the z table. Here we go. The z table gives us area to the left. We want the complement to that. I'm on the negative side, negative 1.2. Here we are. Our value that we need to extract is 0.11. 5, 1. But that is not the answer. I'm going to subtract that value from 1. 0 0.1151. And maybe you see this coming, but this has the same answer as part A because of the symmetry associated with normal distributions. This is also a 0.8849. Pretty cool. 
Next question. This question, part C, is asking about an in-between probability. So when I draw my image, I like to always put my mean here. But we want an in-between 68 inches and 74 inches. The appropriate shading, therefore, is sort of contained somewhere in the middle there. Okay. Because we were given two heights, the 68 and the 74, we're going to need to do this z-score formula twice. We'll do it with the 68, and we'll do it with the 74. We are converting both heights into their respective z-scores. You'll notice one is positive, one is negative. That's not special or unique, just an observation. So 68 inches is a height that is below the mean by 0.4 standard deviations. 74 inches is above the mean by two standard deviations. What we need to do, as we saw in the previous video with in-between probabilities, we need to take both of these to the Z table. Let's go to the table, extract their probabilities, and then subtract accordingly. So I'm going to look at both Z values on the table. Here we go. Negative 0. 0.5 four right here corresponds to a probability to its left of 0.3446. Okay, z-score positive two other side. P two point zero corresponds to a probability of 0.9772. I'm going to write both of those probabilities down. 0.9772 and over here was 0.3446. Now neither of those is the answer. What remember from the previous video what we saw was 0.9772 that is the area or probability to the left of 74 inches. So it's going to contain all of that probability, but we do not want all of that, which is why we will subtract this point 3446, because that is the exact region we don't want. That's the region to the left of 68 inches. So we just need to do a nice subtraction of 0.9772 minus 0.3446 to arrive at the final solution of 0.6326. Oh, and I need to write this with our probability notation, so we know the answer. I need to use P. This is a compound inequality. Probability 68 less than random variable less than 74. So the way these compound inequalities read, we're saying that our random variable height is less than 74, simultaneously larger than 68 inches.
So I'll put this in a box as well. And those are our solutions. I do have a couple more questions to ask you uh, to use the standard normal distribution in different ways. I have a few questions displayed here that are sort of all related. Part D, if an adult male is two standard deviations taller than the mean height for adult males, what's the height of this person? If you refresh back to part C just a little bit, well, we had a someone who was two standard deviations taller than average since the mean height is 69 inches and the standard deviation is two and a half inches. Basically, we just need to add two and a half twice, two times two and a half. So that is a 69 inches plus five inches, which gets us to 74 inches. An individual who is two standard deviations above the mean would correspond to a z-score of positive 2. Part E. If an adult male is two standard deviations shorter than the mean height, what is the height of this person? So in part A, we did taller. Here we're doing shorter. So that would be 69 inches minus 2 times the standard deviation. So 69 minus 5 inches would be 64 inches. Their z-score, because they're two standard deviations below the mean, corresponds to a negative 2. Cool, so we know the z-scores that correspond. Part F. What is the probability that a randomly selected adult male is at least two standard deviations away from the mean height? Drawing this, I know that this question is referring to someone who is 64 inches or below or 74 inches or above. So here I am shading both tails because the question is stating the probability that an adult male is at least two standard deviations away from the mean height. So this is the opposite of an in-betweener. We want the extreme tails. Based on our previous work, we do not need to do any z-score conversions because we already figured out these z-scores. Furthermore, because of symmetry, we can be a little swift in our work because these two areas correspond to probabilities that are two standard deviations beyond the mean. These two areas will be the same due to symmetry. So I'm just going to look up the one in the left tail and utilize that as the same area in the right tail, symmetry. So I'm going to go to negative 2 on the table and look up the corresponding probability in this itsy bitsy left tail. I'm on the negative side. I'm looking for negative 2.0. I believe I found it as illustrated in the little drawing we did it looks like a pretty small area in that left tail turns out it's about 0 0.0228 let's write that down 
point zero two two eight. And again, from symmetry, that also applies over here. So this question, we need to add up both of those probabilities in both those tails. So point zero two two eight plus, or I guess I can just multiply that by two now, can't I? To get our answer of point zero four fifty six. Utilizing the notation, this one's a little trickier to write, but probability that the height is less than 64 or height is greater than 74. And that equals this value that we determined. Okay, I've only got two more questions for you, and that's it, I promise. These last two questions are the classic working backwards style questions, where in all the previous parts of this video, we were finding probability or area or proportions based on the height. Height was given, we found area. In these questions, we want to find the height that corresponds to a particular area. In these questions, it is particularly useful to draw the picture. Height, mean, 69. 40th percentile is going to be contained in the left tail. I want to shade a region that looks like about 40%, percent point four. What we are searching for here is the tick mark, blue tick mark, that distinguishes this region. What is that height? We are working backwards. We are going to take all the same steps as we did in the previous parts of this video. We need to use the z-score formula, but we're using it in a backwards sort of way. We know that 69 is the mean, and that corresponds to z value of zero. We want to find the tick mark that distinguishes this left-sided area of being 0.4 or 40 percent. So in this case I'm drawing the two images here because we need to work in Z first. So first step is to find the Z-score that corresponds to the 40th percentile. So number one, to do that, I need to go look in the body of the Z table. I need to look on the negative side and I'm looking for the value of 0.40. And I believe I have found it. I'm pretty close at least. Remember how we did this in the previous video? You're likely going to find the two closest values. One will be a little larger than 0.40 and one will be a little smaller. Which one is closer? In this case, the one on the left is closer. I need to extract the z-score that connects to this probability that I've highlighted on the left. It appears to be negative 0.25. Better scroll up, double check. Yes. The z value of negative 0.25 will get me area 0.40 as close as possible. Negative 0.25. I'm going to write that down. 
z equals negative 0.25. And I could even put this on my image down here. So I need to use the z-score formula now very strategically. I'm going to rewrite our formula. z equals y minus mu over sigma. I'm going to plug in all of our known values. And check it out, we know a lot, don't we? We know the mean and we know the standard deviation. We know the value of z that connects to the 40th percentile. So we are utilizing this formula in a, well, backward sort of fashion. We are going to plug in all these known values and then solve for the height y. z in pink is negative 0.25. The y value is the height, we don't know that. The mean was 69, the standard deviation 2.5. So solve for y, we need to multiply both sides of this equation by 2.5. Let's do 2.5 times on the left and on the right. By design, these will cancel, and we are left with, on the left side, negative 0.625, use your calculator to help you. On the right side, y minus 69. Now we just need to add 69 to both sides, because remember we are solving for y. So plus 69 on both sides gets us a y value of 68.375 inches. That is our solution. And hopefully that makes sense because this is a value below the mean, so it should be less than 69 inches. It seems quite reasonable. Let's recap that. Step one was to find the z-score that corresponds to the 40th percentile. Uh, step two is to solve for y in this z-score formula after you plug in the z-score from part one. So notice how this is working backwards. In the previous parts of this video, we start with a height, we go to the z table with a z score to find probability, and this is backwards. We were given probability. We went and found the z score to then find the height. Totally backwards. We're going to run this again. I'll be a little more organized. Step one, step two. So step one, find the z-score that corresponds. In this case, it's the upper 10th percentile. The upper 10th percentile corresponds to which z-score? Well, we better draw a picture. I'm getting ahead of myself. Upper 10th percentile of height is going to connect to someone who probably identifies as pretty tall because their height would be way up here. Point 0.10 is the area, and we want to find this blue tick mark. So they are certainly above the mean in height. 
we need to find the z-score that corresponds to this individual. Earlier, we looked up 0.40 because that was in the left tail. Here, I do not want to look up 0.10 because 0.10 is in the right tail. I should look up 0.9 because we always want to work in the left side of the table or left tailed areas because that is how the table is structured. So working backwards, 0.9 in the body of the table to find the corresponding z-score. Here we go. Right now I'm on the negative side. I will not find 0.90 in here. I need to go to the positive side to find 0.90 as close as possible. And I think I am approaching. I found my two candidates slightly below, slightly above 0.90. And the one on the left appears to be marginally closer. The z-score that connects to that value, that probability, is 1.28. 1.28. That is our z-value. Next step is to solve for y. Use Z score formula, the score formula, and solve for Y. Okay, I will rewrite the Z score formula. Again, noticing that we know the Z value, we know the mean, we know the standard deviation. We are going to plug in everything I've just circled to solve for y. Okay, z is 1.28. y, I don't know you yet, we are going to figure you out. You will be above the mean of 69 and divide by two and a half. To keep this brief, Solving for y brings us to 72.2 inches as our solution. I will write that here, 72.2 inches. Okay, we've done a whole lot in this video, very important video in which we are using this z-score standardization formula to find probabilities in any normal distribution and even find percentiles corresponding to any normal distribution.